Good afternoon. This is Father Peter and my colleague Don Salvatierra and I are here at St. Stephen's for the Thursday service of healing. The date is March 25th. And we present this service for the congregation, our virtual congregation of St. Stephen's and the more uh, more regular con congregation of St. Gabriel's. Uh, we're, we're, we're sister parishes, but we're really quite different. Nevertheless, through our services, we're, bring, we're able to bring the two congregations together. Uh, I also want to mention that our services will remain the same for the rest of this week and much of next week. Uh, tomorrow is the last Friday Lenten service, number five, and Suzanne Glover Lindsay will have written that, and it'll be posting, posted early afternoon. And then Compline, etc. Um, next week, we're regular three services on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But on Friday, instead of a reflection, a written reflection, we're proposing to do a virtual Good Friday service. And we will be, we've begun to put that together. We'll be sending out more information uh, early next week. It, it's, it's something we want very much to do, and it, to, to us it makes sense. So please check uh, Facebook, check email, check uh, website just to make sure you don't miss anything. It would likely be early afternoon. I think that's it. Oh, by the way, today the church remembers Saint Oscar Romero and the martyrs of San Salvador. Uh, nine Jesuit priests and four Mary no nuns. Uh, all that happened within the span of 10 years, not, not at all like what's been going on in America over the last seven days. But when you think about healing, think about what happened in uh, El Salvador in 1985 when Romero was assassinated. Uh, but think about what's happened in Boulder, in Atlanta, and other communities where we've had a community of martyrs, really. Very deep stuff. Okay. So let us begin. You have your service booklet, and again, if not, let us know and we'll send them, send them out. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we commend to your loving care all who suffer, especially those who come here seeking your healing grace for themselves or others. Give them patience and hope in their distress. Strengthen and uphold them in mind and body, and grant by your intervention that all your people may be made whole according to your desire through Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mentioned when we began that today the church remembers St. Oscar Romero and the martyrs of El Salvador. There is an appointed collect for the day and for Romero and his martyrs. So we're going to use that now. Let us pray. Almighty God, you called your servant Oscar Romero to be a voice 
for the voiceless poor and to give his life as a seed of freedom and a sign of hope. Grant that inspired by his sacrifice and the example of the martyrs of El Salvador, we may without fear or favor witness to your word who abides, your word who is life, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and glory now and forever. And now the reading and the song. Our first lesson today comes from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 40. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great are your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required, and so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God, your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. Our second reading is from John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our litany of healing. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick or injured, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress 
to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, healthcare workers, and all others who minister to those suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying a peace and holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Please do so either aloud where you are or in the silence of your heart. Please keep in your prayers both communities of St. Stephen's and St. Gabriel's. Please keep in your prayers Matt, Bertha, Jerry, Flo. Also, we would like to pray for Dina and Priscilla. Please keep in your prayers Merrill, Clint, Kevin, and Glenn, and pray for Donna. Please keep Kevin in your prayers as he continues his fight with COVID. And we would also like to pray for the healing of Maria, who is undergoing chemotherapy. We pray for all the frontline workers out there whose healing powers take many different forms in serving their community. And we would also like to pray for all of those lives that have departed from the battle of COVID-19. This week we pray Lenten petitions it's from the litany of penitence, petition number 13. Knit together in your love all whose relationships have frayed, that they may find reconciliation and new beginnings. We would also like to pray petition number 14. Help us to see and accept our own responsibility in the harm that has been done and for which we repent and seek forgiveness. Let us pray. Open to us your healing power, O oh God. We entrust ourselves to your care, knowing that you are doing for us and for all the world far better things than we can ask or imagine. With you as our companion and guide, strengthen us to hope for all that is good and to fear no evil. For your love is stronger than death, and your faithfulness reaches to the heavens. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and to the age of ages. Amen. Now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world, you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now we come to the point in our service of the laying on of hands and anointing. Let us pray. O Lord, Holy Father, giver of health and salvation, send your Holy Spirit to sanctify this oil that as your holy apostles anointed many who were sick and healed them, so may those who in faith and repentance receive this holy unction be made whole. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And now I lay my hands upon you and anoint you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praying that you will be strengthened and filled with God's grace, and that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. May the God who goes before you through desert places by night and by day be your companion and guide. May your journey be with the saints, and may the Holy Spirit be your strength, and Christ your clothing of light, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Let us pray together the final prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament at the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Christ, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. And now the blessing. May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. At this point, we're going to add a closing statement. We, among ourselves, staff, we've been talking about what healing means and what it means to be a healer. And we've pretty much concluded that this service we offer on Thursdays is a service for healing but it is also a service to help those we're healing to recognize that they too can be healers. So we've chosen a short passage from the spiritual journals of Henry Nouwen that we're going to use as a closing today and on going forward, and after which we will have the dismissal. The great paradox of ministry, therefore, is that we minister above all with our weakness, a weakness that involves us to receive from, that invites us to receive from those to whom we go. The more in touch we are with our own need for healing and salvation, the more open we are to receive in gratitude what others have to offer us. The true skill of ministry is to help fearful and often oppressed men and women become aware of their own gifts by receiving them in gratitude. In that sense, ministry becomes the skill of active dependency, willing to be dependent on what others have to give, but often do not realize they have. And now with healing and as healers, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with us today, Thursday, March 24th. Don't forget tomorrow, the last Lenten 
Friday Lenten reflection. Thanks again. Goodbye.